Today we're going to be covering Thanos Wins. It was a six issue storyline that came out around the Infinity War Endgame era when they were trying to promote Thanos even more. It tells a story of, well, Thanos winning. This is Comic Storian. I break down some of your favorite comic books into audio dramas, and today we're going to be covering this particular story. Let's get into it. On the outer rim of space is a place known as the Black Quadrant. It is the stronghold of the Black Order, an unrivaled group of mercenaries, malcontents, and slave masters. Ruling over them from his tower is Corvus Glaive, master of the Black Order and ruler of the Black Quadrant. The worst of the worst bow before him, but once there was a time when he bowed before another, a tyrant that had many names. But as time passed, the tyrant became distracted by the doings of men and involved himself in various wars. In the tyrant's absences, Corvus had taken control, gathered an army, and took his place on the throne. He had to finally become the king that he had always known that he was born to be. The mad titan before had ruled with fear and brutality, but Corvus, he knew how to inspire men. For all its evil, the Black Quadrant worked like a well-oiled machine under Corvus, and that is, until one day when the mad titan returned. Upon seeing what had happened in his absence, Thanos was not happy. As he returned, he slaughtered Corvus's army, blasting away at the groups of men with little effort and beating others with the bodies of their brothers. Thanos continued to walk towards the tower where Corvus resided, and his very step shattered all of those who stood in his path. Once there, Thanos opened the doors to his throne room, and without Thanos saying a word, Corvus told him that he had forfeited this sector. This now belonged to Corvus Glaive and the Black Order, and he is prepared to die for it. A slight smile comes over Thanos' face as he says, Yes, you are. But across the galaxy, a champion goes fox hunting. Trico Slaughterus walks into a dingy bar asking the robot bartender where he is. The robot says that he isn't sure what he's talking about, and Trico grabs him asking, Where is he? The robot points to the back, stating in the back room, and Trico lets him go, telling him, Thank you. He opens the door and sees a pile of bodies, all twisting and wrapping together in a voice that says, Welcome. Aren't you a strapping fellow? Please join us. The more, the merrier. Trico tells the man in the center of the room that he did not want to take part in this debauchery. His name is the man Eros, also known as the Avenger Star Fox, says that he knows exactly who he is. Not merely a champion, but THE champion. Trico then says that he's been tasked with bringing him to Titan by his nephew Thane, and Thane shall not be left waiting. Back in the Black Quadrant, Corvus puts up a fight, or at the very least, he tries to. Thanos strikes him down, and Corvus yells, You abandoned this sector! Surely you can understand that I wanted something to call my own. Thanos picks up Corvus's glaive, telling him, I understand that you took something that did not belong to you. Corvus sees Thanos with his glaive, and he tells him, If you destroy it, it'll kill me, please! Show mercy. Thanos asks him, now you beg. Had you shown more spine, maybe you would have been spared. And in that moment, Thanos breaks the glaive. However, you were once loyal, and that does mean something, so I will give you a choice. You may kill yourself or let me do it. Make no mistake, this is mercy. Corvus begins to look up, and after grabbing a piece of his own broken glaive, he stabs himself with it. He then falls to the ground. Thanos then continues to walk to his throne and he sits down, taking back what is rightfully his. Back across the galaxy, Trico brings Eros aboard his ship and Eros asks, Why would you of all people be working for Thane? Trico tells him, It's because his nephew has offered me the greatest challenge of all. And God help me, Thane thinks that we're going to need you to complete it. Eros then asks, What kind of challenge could the galaxy's greatest champion be interested in? Trico says, it's not a matter of what, but whom. Haven't you heard? Your brother has returned, and we're going to kill Thanos himself. Meanwhile, on the broken moon of Titan, Thane, the son of Thanos, looks over the destruction, waiting for Trico to arrive with those that he's been dispatched to retrieve. However, Thane is not alone, as death has found him as well. Thane looks at Lady Death and says that he didn't hear her, and she looks out telling him that no one ever does. Death then says, Why is it that you look so worried? And Thane says, I am not as powerful as I once was. My father, he is Thanos, he is practically a god. Death smiles, stating, you worry too much. I told you months ago that when I found you, I would take care of everything. Do you trust me? And Thane quickly tells her, no. And Death laughs, telling him, I can't really blame you, but I'll tell you a secret. No one else in the universe knows. It's true, Thanos is practically a god, but the unthinkable is happening. 
Thanos is dying, with Thanos' condition worsening, he begins to search far and wide for remedies to cure himself. One of those efforts is brought up to the planet of Nula, a haven for the ill and the needy. The exotic plants that grow on this planet are used by many for their wondrous medicinal and healing properties. But even a planet like this, one that sees no war and pollution, can be burned to the ground when the Nolans can't explain to Thanos why he is dying. As Thanos continues to search for a cure, in another part of the galaxy, the space pirate Nebula continues to set out claiming something that does not belong to her. Just as she claims her prize, she is stopped as she runs headfirst into Eros. Eros grabs her by the arm, stating, It's funny that I should see you here. As much as I would love to float around and catch up, my ill-tempered friend over there is rather impatient. So fancy a little trip to Titan? At that very moment, along the edge of the Shi'ar Empire, another ship lands on the tiny moon of Gilgrath. Thanos steps down from his ship, but before the guards can even finish telling him that he doesn't belong here, Thanos has already killed him. He walks into the facility with a mentor looking back, and Thanos tells him, Hello, father. What is the matter? Are you not pleased to see me? Mentor gets up, spitting into Thanos' face, and Thanos laughs, wiping his face, telling him, There are many things that I could accuse you of, but being a coward is not one of them. Mentor asks, What are you doing here? These people are scientists. Surely even you do not have a reason to kill them. Thanos tells him, No, these scientists mean nothing to me. What I have come here for is you. There is something wrong, and I need you to find out what it is. Mentor bursts out laughing, telling him, You need my help. It must be true when people call you the Mad Titan. You killed your own mother, annihilated Titan and everyone on it, enslaved entire worlds. I would gladly watch my son die. Thanos then says, I am not the only one that you will watch die today at this very moment outside of the lab. My men are destroying any means of escape. So you will do what is asked or every scientist on this moon and their families will be murdered. And Mentor will be left alive to wade through their corpses. Back across the galaxy, Trico lands his ship and everyone steps off. Nebula says that she can't believe that she let them talk her into this. But Thane tells her that it'll be worth it. Trust him on that. Their meeting is a long time coming, so please, we have a lot to discuss. As everyone gathers around, Thane tells everyone that he has a simple request. They are going to kill Thanos. Eros laughs, telling him, ha ha! You do have your father's prodigious sense of ambition. A nebula says that the galaxy is littered with the graves of all of those who have tried. It's a fool's errand. Trico tells them, just shut up and listen to what the boy has to say. Things have changed. Thanos is vulnerable. Thane continues telling them, that's right. As unbelievable as it may sound, I have learned that my father is dying, getting weaker by the day. Before he finds a cure, we must strike. Which is why I have gathered all of you to lead a small surgical attack. There is something that you will all need. Something from Tarax the Terrible. While Thane then goes over the plan, Mentor continues his research, and as he looks into the microscope, he says that Thanos' body is literally eating itself alive on a molecular level. He would have thought that not such a thing could be possible. It's some sort of god cancer. Thanos then asks, How long? And the Mentor tells him, At this rate, I could say a couple of weeks, and even that may be generous. Thanos swings his arm, breaking some of the equipment, shouting, No! How long until you could find a cure? Mentor asks, Cure? Are you serious? It would take years, even decades, to study your deviant biology and isolate the cause of this illness. Thanos then grabs Mentor, telling him, You have proven yourself to be quite a disappointment. Mentor struggles to breathe, stating, ah, Disappointment! <laughs> How do you think I felt after all of these years, knowing that I was the one that brought Thanos into this world? I only wish that I could have smothered you in your grave. At least it would have been by my own hands that I had ended you. Thanos stares at Mentor and he says, For the first time in your pathetic life, you actually sound like my father. Thanos pulls his arm back and he punches through the Mentor's body, tossing him to the ground to die alone in pain. As he walks back out of the facility, he sees his men scattered on the ground and then he's shocked. As several Shi'ar metaguards fly down telling Thanos that he is under arrest by the authority of the Shi'ar Imperial Guard. Stand down or die. As the guards all begin to attack, Thanos smacks them away stating, You should have not intervened. What happened here is none of your concern. It is a family affair. Flashfire fires down, blasting Thanos, stating, That is wrong. This moon is under our protection. And as Flashfire gets close, Thanos punches him and tells him what inadequate protection it is. He then grabs Smasher, telling him that he will give him one chance to retreat. One chance to save his life. Smasher then says, There's just one thing. It's not just us down here, and as Thanos turns his head, he begins to see more of the Imperial Guards flying his way. Thanos turns to look at everyone, and he starts to groan. Just then, Neutron begins beating into Thanos, reporting that Thanos can't take much more of this. Oracle tells everyone to not let their guard down. They cannot possibly defeat Thanos one-on-one. -on -one. But as the attacks continue, the Imperial Guards begin to notice something that Thanos 
is bleeding. But before he has a chance to get back up, another large guard reaches down to grab him. And as the guard's hand gets closer, Thanos grabs his finger and snaps it, yelling, You will not lay a hand on me! I have slain gods! I am Thanos! And Thanos begins to blast everyone, easily defeating all of the Imperial Guard. And that's when Smasher reports that they are losing control. They need to send in the big gun. Soon the guards begin to regroup and focus their attacks on Thanos to keep him in place, but through the smoke and the fire, a voice can be heard stating, That will be enough. Thanos looks back to see Gladiator and he says, You. Gladiator tells him, Me. He punches Thanos across the battlefield, then he flies over, and just as Thanos' body hits the ground, he says, Thanos of Titan, you are now the prisoner of the Shi'ar Imperium. Pick him up and bring him to prison. However, as this story continues, it is important to note what happened eight months earlier. Eight months ago, Thane sought to claim the Black Quadrant from Corvus with the aid of the Ebony Maw. When Thane attacked, Maw told him that that is right. This was once his father's stronghold, but now it can be his legacy. It can be his birthright. While Corvus himself joined the battle, Thane was facing off with Corvus's new secret weapon, the Coven. As Thane tried to fight them, the Coven drained Thane of his powers and he was taken prisoner. A month passed with Thane in his cell until it was finally opened, only to have Trico thrown in with him. Another month passed and Thane and Trico became friends, so much so that they would often play dice to entertain themselves. One day, Corvus saw them playing games and told them that this is a place of suffering, not for making friends. So Thane was sent to the hole where he waited for months alone in the dark. While surviving only on the rats that he could capture and eat, Thane started to think that he may be losing his mind, and that was until a voice called out to him stating that they can help. And that's when she appeared before him, Lady Death. Thane asked who she was, and Death whispered that he already knows the answer to that. She is the death of everything. But she has not come to claim him, she has come to set him free, to set him free from his terrible burden. She offered to help him find great power, but her only request was that he would give himself to her. Thane stood there taking Death's hand, but before they had left, Thane said that there was something that he has to do. Thane ran over to his old cell where Trico was held, and he found him still locked up. Trico asked if it's really him or if this is a dream, and Thane told him that he's honestly not sure himself. But if he really wants to be a champion, he has a chance to kill a god. Which brings us to the current time. Thane tells everyone that he has gathered them here for a reason. They'll spend the rest of their lives wasting away in a brothel or drifting off in space. Or they could be something more. Eros asks if they were to agree to this madness. How does he propose that they even strike? Thane says they would need something from Terox the Terrible. Trico and himself have some very solid intel that one of Thanos' old lieutenants is in the custody of Terox's warship. With the lieutenant's help, they can access the Black Quadrant's back door. Thane then looks at Eros and tells him that he will be the diplomatic distraction. Keep Terax busy while Nebula and Trico break into his gulag. Nebula then says, okay, if this all depends on them, why do they need him? And Thane says, me? I'm the one with the plan. I'm the leader. Eros begins to laugh, telling him, I think not. No nephew of mine is going to be my leader. But while everyone laughs, Death walks up, wrapping her arms around Thane, telling him, let them have their fun. Soon, you will be the only one laughing. They are so close, but these people are only pawns. Now see, what is to come? As Thane blinks, his vision begins to change to the events of one week in the future. Death and himself standing over Thanos' smoldering body while Eros and Nebula's bodies float lifelessly around them. A short while after Thane's vision, his plan was put into motion as Terax the Terrible gets word that a ship is approaching their vessel requesting permission to come on board. Terax watches the monitor as the ship gets closer and he asks who would be so bold as to seek an audience with Terax. The officer tells him that the person requesting is Eros of Titan. Terax makes for the hangar, and just as he gets close, Eros steps up telling him, Hello! And greetings, Terax. Terax asks him directly, What is the meaning of this? We have no business together. So tell me one reason why I shouldn't shoot you where you stand. Eros tells him, There's no need for such dramatics. I come on a diplomatic mission. So please tell everyone to lower their weapons. As Terax begins to lead Eros into the ship, there's a clink aboard Eros' ship, and that's when one of the containers begins to open. Just then, Thane, Trico, and Nebula all fall out, and they begin to make their way towards the ship's holding cells. As Thane's plan begins to unfold, Thanos himself begins to open up his eyes, finding himself in one of the Shi'ar Super Maximum prisons. As the door opens, Warden Dak walks in laughing, stating that he never thought that he would see the day that the Mad Titan was under his control. Dak removes the containment field, holding Thanos down, and he steps in, stating that he only regrets that he wasn't the one who was here to break him. So what is it that he was thinking about while down here? Suddenly, Thanos' eyes open, and he tells him, I wasn't thinking about anything. Only waiting. Waiting for you. He leans up, grabbing Dak by the arm, and with a hard jerk, he rips it off! 
As Dak cries out in pain, Thanos says that he knew it was only a matter of time before the weak men like you would try to make yourself feel bigger than you actually were. He takes the arm and uses it to open up the cell door, but then he sees another force field in his way. He walks to the force field and through sheer will pushes himself through it as it burns his body. Once out, two guards run up shouting for him to stop and Thanos grabs the gun from one guard and knocks him back into the force field. Then taking the gun, Thanos uses it to stab the second guard. And then he begins to make his way outside. He grabs his helmet and then he looks out and he sees an army of guards all standing there. And he sighs. Fine, let us begin. Back over at Terax's warship, Trico and Nebula find their way to the ship's cells while Eros continues to talk circles around Terax. Terax tells him that he's beginning to think that he's using his silver tongue to deceive him. And Eros says, ha ha, you're a sharp one. Actually, I wasn't here to deceive you. I was only here to distract you. Terax asks him, what do you mean? And Trico punches his way into the lieutenant's cell as the alarm goes off, with Eros stating, a distraction from that. While Terax begins to tell his men to go see what's going on, Eros tells him that there's something else that he's been dying to do. And he blasts Terax and his men with a blast of lightning, knocking everyone to the ground. Over with Thane and the others, Trico pulls the cell door open, asking, what in the blazes is this? Thane pushes past him, stating that he's sorry that he had to deceive them, but they would have never have helped him if he told them what Terax really had. Nebula asks, what have you done? And Thane smiles, stating that I have found the only thing that will give me the power I need to destroy my father. Death then says, not just Thanos, my love. With the Phoenix Force, we'll kill everyone. Sitting before them is the egg of the Phoenix. Nebula stares at the egg and then asks if he even knows what this thing is, what this thing could do. And as Thane gets closer to the egg, he says, I know exactly what this is. This power was taken from me, but this Phoenix egg will give me back everything that I lost. Trico's face turns to disgusted and he says, you used us. I will rip your spine out for this. Thane tells him I'm sorry, but I had no other choice. There's no way that I could have gotten this without your powers. Nebula pulls out her gun stating that that is enough. He is not opening the egg and then pulls the trigger. The gun goes off, hitting Thane in his chest and as Thane's body falls back onto the egg, Eros runs in shouting, what just happened? Trico tells him that the little shit tricked them. He was after the Phoenix egg the whole time. Seconds later, Terax runs in yelling that the egg belongs to him. Stand down or he will vaporize all of them. Trico gets ready to fight, but Eros stops stating, wait, this has all been a big misunderstanding. I'm sure that if we look deep down in our hearts, and Terax yells, not again. The Phoenix egg is mine. I've been working on opening it for months, and now I will not allow any of you to live to talk about it. Nebula says, does he really think that he can take us? He's welcome to try, but there's no way that we're going to let him get his hands on this kind of power. Death then tells them that they would not be able to open it anyway. Do they not see? Do they not realize that for the Phoenix to rise, there must first be death and then rebirth? As soon as Death says that, Thane's eyes begin to glow as the power of the Phoenix egg brings him back to life. And then there's an explosion. Meanwhile, back in the Shi'ar prison, Thanos begins to breathe heavy while he looks at all of the fallen prison guards. Thanos begins to walk towards the exit, and as he does, he stumbles, feeling his strength slowly beginning to fade. He tries to open up the door, but the computer tells him access denied, and he tries again, getting the same result. Thanos yells as he punches the doors open, allowing himself to leave. And once outside, the sirens all go off, and an alert is played over the intercom, telling everyone that there has been a security breach, preparing for self-destruct. Soon the remaining guards begin to run towards the escape ships, and Thanos grabs one by the leg, throwing him to the side. He sits down on the ship as the intercom begins its countdown, and just as he manages to start the ship and leave, the entire prison explodes! Hours begin to pass, and then days. Precious days that Thanos does not have time to spare. Finally, drifting around in space for so long, Thanos' ship makes its way to the Black Quadrant, and it lands just outside of his stronghold. What he sees is not what he expected. All of his armies and mercenaries dead, littered around the base. However, even with his kingdom raised, there's nothing compared to what Thanos is about to face next. And after feeling a presence behind him, he turns to see Thane, wielding the power of the Phoenix Force. Thane begins to gather his power, and Death tells him to do it, and Thanos looks at Death, asking, What have you done? Death looks at him, stating that she has found someone worthy of her love, someone worthy to rule by her side. Thanos then asks, were you the one who did this? Are you the one who made me ill? And she tells him, of course. I wanted to make sure that you were ready for what's to come next. Thanos yells to Thane, whatever she promised you, it's a lie. She could not be trusted. Thane begins to gather his power, asking, where was your advice and wisdom when I needed it, when you abandoned me? We could have done so much together. Death whispers to do it, do it now, take what belongs to you. And Thanos shouts, don't do this, do not listen to her. Thane then takes all the power that he's gathered and releases several blasts into Thanos, telling him, too late. At the spot where Thanos stands burned, Death then asks, did he? 
and Thane says no. He is gone, but Thanos is no longer a threat. As Thane pushes the doors to the throne room open, Death says maybe not, but now he has power. Real power. The rest of the universe will start to come after him. Thane takes his place on the throne, simply telling her, let them, let them feel the wrath of King Thane. And Death then asks, what of your father Thanos? And Thane tells her, there are worse things than even you. Let Thanos see what was cast aside. Let him scrounge for food in the gutters like a dog. Let him be powerless. Let the Mad Titan see what it's like to be nothing more than mortal. As the winds blow over the ruins of Titan, there's a calming silence that covers the city. But even through that silence, the cry of a slaughtered creature can be heard. The scavenger looks down at its kill, and once the rat stops moving, he picks it up under his arm, and he heads back to his dingy makeshift hut. As the scavenger puts the rat on the spit, he takes off his robes to reveal that he is the man once known as the World Destroyer. Thanos. He takes the rat from the spit and he begins to bite, tearing off its parts until all that's left are bones. And just as one scavenger claimed another, there's another that seeks to claim Thanos. He hears the scurrying of something in the hut, and as he grabs his spear, a giant rat screeches at him. He throws his spear, but the giant rat lunges, causing the spear to only graze its shoulder. Once the rat gets close, it bites down onto Thanos' wrist, forcing him to the ground. He reaches out, grabbing a rock, and then with one strong blow, he bashes it into the rat's head, knocking it away. The rat begins to twitch on the ground, and taking that same rock, Thanos lifts it above his head. And that's when a loud thunk can be heard, as the rock comes down. With the rat's head completely obliterated, Thanos sits down against the giant rat's body, and he looks at where the rat had bitten him. After wrapping it up the best that he can, he lays down for the night, and as he does, he starts to notice things are getting darker. He looks over at the fire to see that it's burning out, and with no source of heat, Thanos is forced to sleep through the cold. Soon the days start to come and go, and with no source of food, he turns to the only thing that he can eat, the giant rat. But with no fire, he can't cook it, so every time that he eats, he ends up vomiting it back up. More days begin to pass, and as Thanos begins to set out for more food, he collapses, weak from not being able to keep anything down, and the infection in his arm. As he barely picks himself back up, he hears someone behind him, and two more scavengers appear, telling him that this is their territory, and he's not supposed to be here. Thanos asks, Your territory? This is my world. One of the scavengers kicks Thanos to the ground, telling him that they will give him one last chance to walk away. And Thanos asks, Do you even know who I am? I am Thanos. The second scavenger cracks Thanos over the head, telling him, Yeah, sure. And people call me the legendary Star Lord. The two take turns beating down on Thanos until he stops moving, and they begin to rummage through his knapsack. The first scavenger notices Thanos' helmet and says that this can't really be Thanos, can it? The two stare at each other for a moment, and then they start laughing as they go back to kicking Thanos. But just then, a spotlight shines down on him, and the two scavengers decide to run while they have something to show for their troubles. Thanos slowly begins to get back up and he notices the spotlight is coming down from a ship that is coming in awfully close. He begins to run, but in his weakened state, he doesn't get very far before tripping over himself. And the ship then lands close by as a voice tells him that he has to say, I've seen you in much better days. Thanos looks back to see his brother Eros and with him Trico and Nebula. Eros says that he can't believe that he's saying this, but Thanos, we need your help to save the universe. Just a few days ago, the small planet of Flivox 6 rallied their forces once word of Thane's rise began to spread. Flivox 6 is known for having the largest standing army across the galaxy, one that many fear. But just as they gather together to take on Thane, it only takes him seconds to destroy them and their planet. Thanos groans, asking, Why are you telling me this? And Eros says that it's because we need your help in killing your son. Nebula yells, No! The only reason why I agreed to come here was to kill Thanos while he was still weak. Nebula punches Thanos to the ground, and Trico grabs her, stating that this is not the time. After kicking Trico in the groin, Nebula tells him to never put his hands on her again. As he falls to the ground, Nebula takes out her knife, and she begins to walk towards Thanos. Eros, holding out his hand, using his power of manipulation, tells Nebula that she does not want to do that, and she suddenly stops, stating that she doesn't. Thanos wipes the blood from his mouth, stating not to fall for his brother's tricks. He's using his power over you. Nebula spins back, pointing her knife at Eros, stating that if he ever uses his power again, Eros looks at Thanos, asking, what? Am I supposed to let her kill you? Thane said that you were 
Well, I just never expected you to be so. And Thanos asks, Mortal? Thane gets up stating, My son is in league with Lady Death herself. She is the cause for my illness and the reason for Thane to obtain the Phoenix Force. Trico begins to get back up stating that Thane tricked them as well. They were supposed to, you know, kill him. But he was after that damned egg the whole time. Thanos then asks, if you wanted me to dispose of Thane and I took his power, what would stop me from killing the three of you? Era shrugs, stating, brotherly love? Look, these are desperate times and Thane is just getting started. Thane has obtained the power of a god and it will take the power of a god to stop him. Thanos asks, so you all allied with my son in an attempt to kill me and now you're switching sides? And Eros and Nebula state, yeah, pretty much. Trico yells, this was all a waste of time. Thanos doesn't even have power anymore. And Thanos tells him, what was once lost? can be found again. We'll go and find the Cosmic Coven, the three that are one, the Witches of Infinity. Arrow says, wait, the Witches? You must really be mad. They're just a myth, surely. And Thanos tells him, no, they are very much real. When I possess the Infinity Gems, I could sense their presence out there on the edges of the universe. The Cosmic Coven is very real. They are the gatekeepers of the gods. Eros tells him, well, if they are real, and so would the stories. So to strike a deal with the witches would cost you your very soul. Thanos turns back and tells him, I lost my soul a long time ago, brother. As Thanos boards Nebula's ship, she yells at him, stating that they're only gonna go when she says that they will go. And Thanos tells her, fine, you can decide. Either you leave me here to die along with the rest of the universe, or you fix my arm and take me to the coven to regain my power so that I can kill my ungrateful son. But as an unlikely alliance begins to form, another alliance made of war fleets from both the Shi'ar Empire and the Spartox fly ever closer to the Black Quadrant. Thane and Death look up at the lights coming from the fleets, and Death says that they are coming, my love. And Thane tells her, I know, and they're gonna keep coming until I'm dead, but I can't help but feel that this isn't right. Death whispers that he feels that he has unfinished business with his father, and Thane tells her, yes, stripping him of his power and casting him away, it's not enough. Death brings Thane closer and tells him, we will go to Titan and end him once and for all, but first, they come. Thane begins to gather up his powers and he flies up stating, of course, their lives will be yours. But back with Thanos and the others, Trico says that they are passing through uncharted space. Are they sure that this is the correct coordinates? And Thanos tells him, I already said that I sensed them when I had the infinity gems. I sensed the witches out here in the blackest parts of space. Six all-knowing eyes staring back at me. Trico then asks, how are the witches supposed to help them? And Eros says that if the fables are true, the witches are said to be older than the gods. When the power of a god fades, it is these enchantresses of eternity that collect these old gods. It is said that they feed on their souls and disperse their power back into the cosmos. Just then the alarms begin to go off and Nebula says that this is a bad idea. They're getting pulled into a black hole. Thanos grabs a space helmet and says, we're exactly where we need to be. I'm going to go into that black hole and you shall wait for my return. Eros grabs a helmet telling Thanos that if they are really in the right spot, he cannot be trusted to go alone. Eros then looks back and says, the two of them will stay here. And if we don't return or contact is lost, then you two must leave. And Nebula says, no arguments with that. Thanos and Eros leave the ship and they drift closer to the black hole as it starts to pull them in. And something feels feels wrong, very wrong. The two are thrown down onto solid ground and just as they take off their helmets, a voice calls out to them. It asks, two brothers come to see three sisters. Welcome to the end of all things, sons of Titan. Welcome to the inverted world. Welcome to the God Quarry. Thanos looks down into the hole filled with skeletons asking, what is this God Quarry? All I see is a graveyard. I came seeking the power that you are said to hold. Now answer before your tongues are ripped out through your mouth. The witches tell them that he is in no position to do anything of the sort. He is not only weak, but impotent. Just as Thanos gets ready to do something, though, Arrow steps in front of him and says that they should probably try a gentler approach. She tells the witches that there is an imbalance in the universe. His unstable nephew has the Phoenix Force, and what Thanos here seeks is the return of his powers to stop him. Now, they would be more than willing to help them in any way that they can, right? The witches ask if he's trying to use his power to manipulate the Sisters of Eternity. And together, the three witches begin to electrocute Eros. Meanwhile, back on Titan, Thane looks around and finds that Thanos is nowhere to be found. He yells to Death that they should have killed him when they had the chance. Now he's escaped! And Death tells him that Thanos is not a threat to them anymore. The universe is theirs if they want it. It's only a matter of time before the heroes of Earth come. So let them go there now and let the six billion souls of Earth sing her name. As Death goes on, Thane looks over and yells that whoever is there show themselves. The scavengers from before poke out stating that they don't mean any harm. Please, just let them go. And Thane looks at the one wearing Thanos' helmet asking where he got that. Where did 
did Thanos go? The scavenger says, well, a ship with three people came. One was a blue alien girl, a big dumb looking guy with lots of hair, and another guy wore a fancy red suit with fancy hair. They argued for a while, and then the four of them took off. Thane looks back at death and tells her that they were wrong to underestimate. It is time that they do what he wants now, and what he wants is to kill them. Before Thane leaves, he turns back and tells the scavenger wearing the helmet to give it to him. The scavenger runs up, handing it over, stating that he meant no harm. Thane takes the helmet and smiles as he puts it on. Back outside the black hole, Trico shouts that he's getting bored just sitting here. It's been hours! Sitting around picking my teeth is not a mission befitting of my talents. Nebula thinks about it for a moment and then says, well, we can see what other talents the champion of the universe has. Trico sits there asking, what do you owe? Well, I suppose we could. As Nebula begins to take off her belt, she tells him to do her a favor and just stop talking. Back inside the black hole, the witches continue striking Eros down, telling him that he is so vain, perhaps a hex will teach him the same humility as an order. The lightning begins to fade, and as Eros gets up, he rapidly starts to age, and he shouts, no, please, anything but this. The witches wave their hands, removing the hex, telling him next time he thinks about using his powers of manipulation. Remember how he begged. Eros stands up, stating that he is humbled by them, and Thanos begins to laugh. Eros asks, oh, did I amuse you? And then he jumps up, kicking Thanos in the face. As Thanos falls, Eros jumps on him, punching and shouting, I've lived my whole life in the shadow of your evil. Can you possibly know what it's like to be the brother of a demon? Thanos continues laughing, telling him, if you had shown more moxie, I may have had more respect for you. The witches then laugh, stating that they make their squabbles look rather pale in comparison. Thanos gets back up, stating that he's had enough of this. They know full well why he has come and he seeks his full power back. The witches tell him that he is correct, that they are the caretakers of the dead and forgotten gods who rest here. But the quarry still holds all of his power. They are not the ones to give back that power. It all depends on him. The quarry gives or takes. Those who enter it willingly face a trial for their very soul. Should he pass, the power that he seeks will be his. However, should he fail, he will join the other deities who are now frozen for eternity in the quarry's ageless walls. Over in Nebula's ship, Trico and Nebula lay on the bed and Trico says that he did not see that coming. Nebula Nebula gets up getting dressed, telling him to not get used to it. That was a one-time thing. And when they get back, remember, this never happened. Just then, the alarms go off, and as they run to the monitors, they see something flying towards them at an alarming rate. As the screen comes on, they see Thane, and Trico says, Oh, crap! Down on the god quarry, the witches ask Thanos, What will it be? Will he enter the quarry? And Thanos yells that he has come too far not to, and he begins to climb down into the pit. He uses the bones of the gods that have already attempted it, and Thanos feels his body being pulled into the walls. He shouts, what is this trickery? But as he finishes, his body becomes frozen, just like the other gods. The witches state that there is no trickery. The quarry has him now. His trial is just beginning. As Thanos' vision begins to fade, he opens his eyes. He sees something that he never thought that he would see. He sees himself calling out to the Avengers to assemble. As a monster throws Sam Wilson, Thanos begins to tell the other Avengers to pull back and take care of the wounded. Sam gets up and says that he's really glad to see him. And Thanos tells him, take it easy. I'll handle this Cretan. As Thanos turns back, he blasts the monster away, shouting that no one will harm Thanos' friends. But while Thanos lives his life as an Avenger back in space, Nebula begins to power up the ship, stating that they need to get out of here if they could just get into light speed. But just as the ship begins to make that jump, Thane flies by and Nebula asks, how is he keeping pace with them? He begins to release a blast through her ship, forcing the two to make a crash landing onto an uncharted planet. As they tumble out of the ship, Trico grabs one of the ship's guns and he opens fire on Thane, shouting, you used us! Thane deflects the bullets, telling him, yes, I did. That's all you're good for. As Thane's hand touches the barrel of the gun, it begins to melt, and Thane grabs Trico by the neck, stating that he will give him one last chance to live. Where is my father? Back in Thanos' trial, he stands in the Avengers Tower, watching his new friends all over the world. And Sam asks, all quiet, boss? Thanos says that it would seem to be so. The abomination today was the only threat that needed to be dealt. Sam tells him, yep. And the West Coast team just checked in. All good over there. And Star Fox and the Cosmic Avengers checked in as well. Thanos asks him, Star Fox? And Sam says, yep, yeah, it's all clear out there. Star Fox, Groot, and Star Lord are heading back home to a base on Titan. But as Thanos hears this, he begins to say that something doesn't feel right. Like I've forgotten something very important. 
Suddenly, all the monitors begin to change to images of Thanos killing people, and Sam tells them, You have. Thanos yells, Witches of Infinity! The God Quarry! That is what this is! And Sam says, Yes, but it can be. Thanos says, What do you mean? And Sam goes on telling him, I mean this. You could be the greatest man who ever lived. You could be happy at peace, and all you have to do is stay. Thanos turns away, and after a few moments, he bursts out laughing. Is this it? Is this how you're going to tempt me? This is my great trial. Being offered a chance at goodness? Sam tells him, no, we tempt you with a very chance for peace, true peace. Thanos looks at Sam and he asks, don't you see? I know exactly who I am. I am Thanos and I made peace with that long, long ago. Thanos takes his hand and he claps them together, crushing Sam's head. Next, Thanos rips the doors off the next room and he opens fire, decimating the rest of the Avengers, yelling, I am Thanos, the world killer, Thanos, the destroyer and I have power. Back in the quarry, the statue of Thanos that was frozen begins to crack, and from it, Thanos breaks free, shouting. Eros quickly reaches down to help Thanos up, asking what happened, and Thanos tells him, I believe I owe you this. And suddenly, a powerful blast shoots upwards, blowing Eros away, and as he lands, he yells, but I helped you. And Thanos tells him, shut up, you are nothing to me. And he releases another blast into Eros. Thanos then looks back at the witches, telling them that their trial was pathetic, and they ask, was it? It seemed to be exactly what was needed. You got exactly what you wanted. The witches open up a portal for Thanos to leave, and they ask, what would you do next? What do you think? I'm going to kill that insolent pup. Back over at the uncharted planet, Trico struggles for air, yelling that the power is messing with his head. This isn't who he is. And Death tells Thane to do it, kill Trico and give him to her. Do it! Nebula springs out with her gun pointed at Death, asking, where did you come from? And Death tells her, I'm everywhere and everyone, including you. Thane tightens his grip, asking again, where is Thanos? And Thanos lands on Thane, telling him, right here, boy. Thane gets up asking, will you finally face me? And Thanos laughs, telling him, I will wipe you from this world like the accident that you are. I am Thanos and I have returned. Without saying another word, the two scream as they charge at each other, punching into each other's face. The strength from the blows causes a massive explosion, knocking back both Trico and Nebula. But as Thanos and they fight with powers equal to gods. Death watches them and smiles. All of this destruction pleases her, for it is she who manipulated these events. And as for why she did all of this, only she knows. Thanos grabs one of the stone pillars, throwing it down on Thane, telling him, You are such a sniveling disappointment of a son. And the two gods continue to punch each other over and over, each with a force to shake the entire planet. Just as Thanos begins to gain an upper hand, Thane catches the punch and knocks Thanos so hard that he is launched into space. As Thane flies up to get him, Thanos catches his punch, laughing, You have no idea the power that I wield. Thanos pulls back his arm, punching into Thane with enough power to rocket him back down to the planet and deep below its crust. Thanos then follows up right behind him, charging into him with enough force to shoot the both of them through the planet and out the other side. There's a moment of silence as Thane floats in space, but not letting up on his attacks. Thanos grabs a piece of the planet, hurling it at Thane. As the debris gets closer, Thane lunges back into Thanos and the two head straight back into the god quarry. Trico and Nebula, who have just been trying to get away, are then sucked into the black hole shortly after Thane knocks Thanos into it. As Nebula hits the ground, she begins to pick herself back up and the witches tell her to hurry up. She she isn't going to want to miss this. It will be the final battle of the father and son at the edge of the universe. A reckoning is at hand! Thane starts to look around asking, what is this place? And the witches tell him, this is the god quarry, the place where gods are made and undone. What shall it be for you? One of the witches stops asking, do you not smell it? He is not alone. And the next one says, yes, the phoenix is with him. And that old bird has no place here. The three witches focus their lightning on Thane and just as it hits, the phoenix force is ripped out of his body. The phoenix cause as it flies away and the witches tell it off you go tweet tweet now the boy must face the cosmic coven as the man that he really is Thane looks at himself and then Thanos adds that is not the only thing that you must face you must also face your maker with a loud thoom Thanos punches into Thane so hard that it knocks out his teeth but while Thanos is dealing with Thane Nebula tries to wake up Trico and he asks what the hell is this place Nebula tells him that she has no freaking idea but it's probably somewhere bad and just as she says that Eros lifts his head up stating, it's nice of you guys to finally show up. Nebula runs over asking what happened to him and Arrow says, what do you think? 
Thanos happened. Thanos then begins to pick Thane up by his head, telling him, You aren't so brave without the Phoenix Force, are you? Thane begins to beg for him not to do it, and Thanos reaches up, grabbing the helmet, asking, You beg now. Moments ago, you claimed that you were going to kill me, but there's no need to beg. I have no intention of killing you. And Thane asks, Will he be spared? Thanos tells him, Spared? Oh no, there are things worse than death. Is this not what you said to me when you stripped the power from me and cast me onto Titan? I've endured the God Quarry to find out exactly who I am, and for the son who never knew who he was, you will most likely be in living hell. Thanos releases Thane over the God Quarry, and as Thane grabs onto one of his arms sticking out of the walls, he shouts, so I'm sorry, please, please help! But soon his words begin to fade as his entire body begins to freeze over and turn to stone. Thanos scoffs, telling Thane, goodbye. You were nothing but an embarrassment. Before Thanos could even walk away, Death tells him, well done. And Thanos tells her, you. The witches all float towards Death, telling her that it's been a while since they've seen her here. But she has no business here. Death says, of course she does. Thanos is her business. She sent his son after him so that Thanos would become the man that she longed for. She was the one who made him ill. She knew that he would overcome it and rebuild himself to become great once again. And then he would be worthy once again of her love. Thanos smacks her hand away, telling her that she is right about one thing. I did rebuild myself, and now I no longer need or want your love. The witches all start to surround Death, stating that it seems that her business has ended. Perhaps she should be on her way. They then cast their magic, banishing Death from the quarry. And Thanos asks, is she? The witches tell him, dead? You should know better than that. You can never kill Death. Only delay her from returning so soon. Behind all of them, Trico and Nebula hold Eros up, and Eros says, well, he's won yet again. And Thanos asks, was there any doubt? Nebula tells him that she would think so, especially how they found him crawling around eating rats back on Titan. Thanos asks, and what? I'm supposed to be grateful of the three of you? Are you to be allies? No. Thanos has no friends. Thanos needs no family. You can all rot in here for all I care. With that, he jumps back up through the black hole, disappearing. Nebula looks around and sees the witches disappearing as well, and asks, what are they supposed to do now? Trico yells, no fear. I am the champion of the universe and I will find a way out. And Nebula just sighs. Across the galaxy on the moon that was once the home of the most fearsome mercenaries and soldiers now stands a graveyard that would be a fitting place to start all over again. Thanos lands down and begins to walk towards his throne, ready to rebuild what he once lost. Thanos is the destroyer. Thanos is the king. And all shall know him and fear him, for Thanos has returned. All across the universe, there are beings with powers that most would agree are the mightiest beings in all of existence. But whether these beings are big or small, they all know that someday everyone and everything will die. On their lips, they all whisper the same exact thing. Thanos wins. But at this current time across space, at Jatari Prime, the Jatari sit in their arena watching in awe at the sight before them. The defeat of one of their best warriors at the hands of Thanos. Thanos steps down onto the head of the warrior, asking, Who is your king? And the warrior says it is him. Thanos calls him liar. And the warrior yells, It is true. He is king. Please give me. But before the warrior could finish, the sound of a head being squashed under Thanos' mighty boot can be heard. And he says, Kings do not beg. The Chitauri in the stands all begin to cheer and they shout Thanos' name as he takes his newly claimed throne. But Thanos is not impressed. Just then one of the Chitauri appear from behind the throne stating that his name is. But before he could finish, Thanos tells him, no one. The Chitauri says that if that pleases him, just let him say that the soldiers that he was so merciful enough to let live are now under his full and uncontested command. And with that said, he is curious if, but before he could even finish, Thanos grabs the Chitauri by the head, slamming him into the throat, asking, What the hell do you want? The Chitauri struggles to lift his head up, asking if it would be possible if he was to tell his god to stop killing. Thanos stares for a moment and then throws the Chitauri back, asking, Your what? The Chitauri does not stand and he points up, asking, Do you not know? It appeared out of nowhere and it's been destroying our defenses faster than even you could. As the sky soon begins to rain blood, Thanos smiles. A new challenger for him to conquer has appeared, and that challenge is headed straight for him. Up in the sky, 
Jedi, the cosmic Ghost Rider laughs as he shoots and destroys all of the Chitauri on his way while he makes his way down to Chitauri Prime. This Ghost Rider, though, most have never heard of, partly because he is a former Herald of Galactus, and now he is the right hand of the Final King. The Final King is also the name that no one has ever heard, mainly because this Ghost Rider comes from the future. The Ghost Rider tears his way through the land and into the arena, and then he hops off waving to Thanos, stating, Hey! Thanos looks down at the Ghost Rider, and the Ghost Rider pats his seat, stating, Uh... I need you to come along quietly. Thanos continues to look at Ghost Rider smiling, and Ghost Rider tells him, Ah, oh, sh**. You're gonna wanna fight, huh? Thanos steps down from his throne telling the Ghost Rider, You can go tell Mephesto that if he wanted an audience with Thanos, he should have sent. And Ghost Rider stops him. Oh, no, 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 no. I haven't been to hell in, like, forever. Look, can you just come with me peacefully? Killing you would really mess up the timeline. Thanos blasts the Ghost Rider right, telling him, Die! But at that same instant, Thanos finds himself wrapped up in the Ghost Rider's chain. Before Thanos can even blink, Ghost Rider tells him that these chains are forged from the bones of Sidorak, and don't even bother trying to break them. Secondly, I also have a piece of the Time Stone, so if you want to screw around and start throwing lasers, this is what's actually going to happen. And with that said, Thanos remains quiet, and Ghost Rider fires up his engine, riding off into space so that he can activate the broken time Stone. Once the two of them pass through the portal, Thanos finds himself looking at a broken Earth. Millions of years in the future, Ghost Rider speeds down to the planet into a stone palace, quickly stopping and throwing Thanos' body across the room. As Ghost Rider gets off his bike, he begins to walk down the hallway, and Thanos stands back up shouting, You will not just walk away from me, do you hear me? Ghost Rider walks away, telling him, It's weird that I can on the count of having no ears. Thanos then yells, I will kill you! And without even paying attention to him, Ghost Rider drops the piece of the time stone into another's hand, stating, There you go, boss. Thanos struggles to free himself, yelling, I am Thanos! And the man in the shadows laughs, stating, That you are. But I am afraid that there is no one here to oppose you. Did you see it now? You have already won. As Thanos looks up, he sees himself, but a much much older version. It is then that Thanos is told of his life, his upbringing, his trials, and ultimately his victory over everything. Whether it was humans, inhumans, or gods, he fought and killed them all. And after destroying everyone on Earth, he made a new throne, one made of the skull of Galactus. And just as the story is reaching its end, Thanos punches the man who looks like him, stating, I do not care who you think you are, but know this, no one will disrespect Thanos. The man starts to get up yelling, I did not bring you here to fight. And Thanos yells back, Then you shouldn't have brought me here! As he lifts up his boot to stop the pretender, Ghost Rider jumps between them, shouting, Whoa, big fella! Look, all the cards are on the table. I can't be killed since, you know, I'm already dead. So how about we just calm down because all this time travel stuff is kind of confusing. Thanos grabs Ghost Rider by the head, telling him, I would very much like to test the theory about your death. But then the pretender's voice calls out, begging him, Don't do it, please! Thanos then asks, Please? The pretender kneels down, stating, I need your help. Thanos stares at the man and releases Ghost Rider, but then seconds later, the man is thrown from his palace, and he stands back up laughing. Thanos jumps out, punching into him, shouting, How dare you wear that face and let the word please come out of your mouth? You are no king. You are no Thanos. Just as Thanos gets ready to deliver the final blow, the man stands back up, blasting into Thanos, who then stands up, spitting the blood out of his filling mouth. The man then gets up, telling him, Here's the one thing that only only Thanos would know. Dion, the true name you had chosen for you. A name that she had only spoken to you on the day that she died. Thanos scowls, asking, what do you need help? King Thanos reaches down, telling him, I lost someone, and I need help bringing them back. Thanos asks who, and King Thanos looks off at the giant statue of Lady Death, asking him, who do you think? Later, as Thanos stares into the hollow eyes of the Ghost Rider, he relives the conquest of King Thanos, smiling, stating that it's beautiful. King Thanos asks, Exhilarating, is it not? And Thanos tells him, You do this every morning? I can see why you keep the idiot demon around. Ghost Rider yells, You know I can still hear you, right? And King Thanos then tells Thanos to come. It's time for breakfast. A short while later into the dining hall they walk, and Thanos looks at the table set for two. But as he reaches for the only other chair, King Thanos tells him, No, that seat is taken. Thanos then looks at the black rose there, and he says, 
Ah, where is she? King Thanos takes a bite out of his rat, stating that he does not know. He has killed almost every living thing in the known galaxy, and she still has not shown herself. But there is one final foe that he must kill, and that is why he has brought him here. After that, then she will be his. Thanos slams his fist onto the table, asking, Who is this foe who could possibly stir so much fear in the great King Thanos? King Thanos tells him, The Fallen One. Thanos looks at him, and after a moment he says, You can't be serious. You brought me all this way to fight some forgotten herald. King Thanos then says, Be careful what you say. The Fallen One is near, and at its current speed, it will arrive tonight, shortly after the sun falls. Until then, I will prepare for the oncoming battle, and you may want to do the same. As King Thanos walks off, Ghost Rider walks up, picking up the scraps left by the king, and he tells him, Don't take it personally. You know what? Want to help feed the dog? Thanos follows Ghost Rider down to the lower parts of the palace, and as they walk, Thanos says, It is my understanding that the rider would only punish the wicked. You seem to be a rather odd companion for my future self. Ghost Rider tells him, yeah, well, you sit in the barber chair long enough, you get your hair cut. I used to only punish bad guys, but hanging around you, it changes a person. Once Ghost Rider reaches the bottom, Thanos sees the dog that he was talking about, and it's the Hulk. Ghost Rider goes on stating that everyone's got a little darkness in them. He should have heard the stuff that came out of Steve Rogers' mouth when he fed him to the dog. Hell, even I used to be a totally different guy, all broody, dark, and mysterious. Real downer. If you would have met me back in the day, you wouldn't even recognize me now. Spend some time in hell and a few hundred years as Galactus as Herald, and then a couple more million years hanging out with you, makes a fellow go pretty hilariously insane. While Ghost Rider throws some of the leftovers out, Thanos then asks, I know you. Ghost Rider dusts his hands off, stating, Ha! Look how rude I'm being! He extends his hand, telling him, My name is Frank Castle. Thanos' eyes widen for a moment, and then he turns back to leave, stating, I do not know that name. Ghost Rider goes back to petting Hulk, stating, Pfft, figures. As the night comes, up in the halls of King Thanos' palace, he places a black rose around Lady Death's statue, asking if she's watching. Is she really seeing everything that he is doing for her? But just then, Thanos calls out that they've waited long enough. Thanos waits for no one, not even Thanos! I will not be left to play the errand boy here. King Thanos gets up and hastily walks back, drawing his sword, shouting, Silence! I have suffered more than enough of your disrespect in these halls. One more word and I will kill us both. As the two stare down at each other, Thanos walks towards Death's statue, stating that he apologizes for his tone. It's just that he's a rather disappointment. Surely he understands. Where he came from, he has renounced of the Black Lady. He is no longer her fool. To come here and see him still waiting. King Thanos sits in one of the pews laughing, asking, Do you remember what was looking back at you when you stared into the rider's eyes? We will always be her fool. Always. You may think that you've given up on her, but no one walks away from death. Not even us. Thanos then asks, If that's so, when was the last time that you have seen your great love? And King Thanos tells him, Oh, hundreds of years ago? Thousands? I really can't recall anymore. It was after I killed the gold-skinned boy. What was his name? Aaron something Adam? Anyway, she was waiting for me after that battle, but she just stood there, not saying a word, as if she was waiting for more. I'd given her everything. My enemies, allies, children, everything, and yet. But at that moment, there's a loud explosion that blasts through the stained glass windows. Thanos gets up asking, what is this? And King Thanos tells him, it is time. The fallen one is here. Thanos then shouts, telling him, look at yourself, trembling at the sight of a lost herald. What have you become? The low rumbles from the fallen one can be heard, and King Thanos says, you have never faced a foe like this. The fallen one isn't a being or a man. It is a title. And through the smoke, the silver surfer flies in with the annihilation his horde right behind him. Within seconds, Thanos, the King, and Ghost Rider find themselves fighting the Annihilus Horde, quickly becoming overwhelmed. As King Thanos focuses on Silver Surfer, Ghost Rider fires into the crowd and Thanos yells, If you're done playing with your firearms, something hellish would be helpful. Ghost Rider yells, Ha! You know, I always forget I could do that stuff. Just then, Ghost Rider explodes, releasing a giant wave of fire, burning everything to cinders. And as the smoke clears, King Thanos laughs, stating, Perhaps I was wrong to bring my younger self here. And Thanos tells him, Silence! This is not right. Can it be that easy? But through the fire, Silver Surfer tells him, No and he blows everyone away with a cosmic blast. King Thanos begins to pick himself back up, asking, What took you so long to show? And Silver Surfer tells him, I was not waiting. I was working. More rumbling can be heard, and King Thanos asks, Is that so? What exactly were you working on? The rumbling begins to grow louder, and lightning is a spark from Silver Surfer's hand as Mjolnir appears. Silver Surfer then says, I was working on being worthy. King Thanos yells, I will kill you with that hammer. 
And Silver Surfer says, not to worry. If you wish to be with Mjolnir, then I will leave it to mark your grave. And lightning begins to come down and Ghost Rider yells, Oh crap! Silver Surfer then shoots down throwing lightning at both Thanos and Ghost Rider. And he plows straight into King Thanos, throwing him out of the palace. As Thanos starts to get back up, Silver Surfer bashes him with his surfboard. And then he calls back the hammer. Thanos looks up and sees Silver Surfer gathering power, shouting, No! The Bolt of Lightning strikes down on the palace, destroying its foundation, reducing it to a pile of rubble within seconds. Silver Surfer stands up and Ghost Rider yells, Hey, it looks like you forgot something. You aren't the only herald in this house. Ghost Rider rides his surfboard of flames, and Silver Surfer grips the hammer, telling him, I did not forget. After swinging upward, he shatters Ghost Rider's body and skull, telling him, I just did not care. Thanos pulls himself out of the debris and he sees Ghost Rider's body hit the ground. He says, you just unleashed something that you could not hope to contain. Silver Surfer asks, is that so? What is it that I have unleashed? And just then there's another rumble from the ground and right afterwards the Hulk bursts out of the ground shouting, Hulk, cool! As Hulk gets out, he hits Silver Surfer hard enough to throw him into the altar room, destroying the Lady Death statue. He starts to pick himself up asking, Bruce? The Hulk jumps in screaming, Hulk, cool! And Silver Surfer tells him, you must listen, and he easily grabs him by the throat. Hulk starts punching Silver Surfer repeatedly, and Silver Surfer tells him, please, try and calm down, you will only hurt yourself. Slowly, the Hulk begins to stomp, and he changes. Silver Surfer lets go, and Bruce tells him, please, kill me. Don't let them hurt me anymore. Silver Surfer tells him to rest, it'll all be over soon, and Thanos walks in, stating, we should hurry this up, I grow tired of this dancing. Silver Surfer places himself in front of Bruce, telling them, come. We will end this now. Thanos laughs, telling him, No one is talking to you. And before the Silver Surfer has a chance to react, King Thanos stands with both him and Bruce in the back of Surtur's Twilight. As King Thanos begins to beat Silver Surfer down and then he throws the sword to Thanos, King Thanos then holds Silver Surfer and Thanos himself takes the sword, cutting off the arm that the Silver Surfer is using to wield Mjolnir. The two go back and forth, taking turns, punching Silver Surfer. And as Silver Surfer falls to his knees, King Thanos grabs him by the head asking, What did you say about the hammer? The king then takes Silver Surfer's head, slamming it down onto the handle. And as the light begins to fill the room, Thanos looks around, stating, There, the great bow is dead. Now send me home. But first, King Thanos doesn't respond, and instead, he looks out to the field and he sees her, Lady Death, this time. She is finally dressed for a wedding. As Death begins to walk up towards the altar, she stops and smiles as she lifts her veil. King Thanos says, You came. And Thanos says, Why did she stop there? Why does she not come any further? What more does she want? Thanos storms up to her, stating, I have grown tired of your games. I can only imagine that I am one of them. What more do you need? Death looks at him, and she shrugs. Thanos demands for her to speak. We have given you everything that you have ever wanted. There is nothing left to kill. What more could? Oh. Thanos stops and he looks back to the king and he tells him, He has to kill me. That's why he brought me here. It was never to kill the surfer. He's given you everything else in creation, so to be with her, we have to die like everything else. King Thanos walks up and tells him, Yes. Thanos tells him, No one kills Thanos, but Thanos. Death motions for the two to continue, and Thanos asks, You aren't gonna make this easy, are you? And King Thanos asks, Would you? King Thanos begins to take off the rest of his armor, and he says, I have envied you for the life that you will witness. We've made mistakes, but there is only one thing that we have learned in this time, that it is never. But before he could finish, Thanos blasts him away, and Thanos asks, Do you want to talk, or do you want to die? Before he could finish, Death starts to giggle in excitement. And King Thanos backs up, telling him, Very well, then. And so the fight between the gods begin. Punch after bloody punch. Kick after crippling kick. Blast after destructive blast. And as the two go back and forth, Thanos grabs the king by the eyes, gouging out one of them. And then he snaps one of his arms. King Thanos tries to fight back, but with one thunderous crack, whom? Thanos punches the king down. Death watches, almost in shock, listening for Thanos' punch. Boom. Boom. Boom! 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 And then he stops. King Thanos asks, What are you waiting for? Finish this! Kill me! And Thanos kicks King Thanos one more time before wrapping his hands around his throat. But as King Thanos begs him to do it, Thanos lets go. He steps back away and King Thanos yells, asking, What are you doing? Come back and finish this! Please! Thanos looks at the blood on his hands and he says, Kings, do not beg. 
King Thanos shouts that he's a coward, a weakling. You are afraid. Come finish what? Thanos charges forward, grabbing the king, and he asks, if you want to do it, do it yourself. And then he rips the time stone necklace off. Thanos turns back, stating that his Ghost Rider was able to charge the stone, yes? If there's a herald here now. He kneels down, grabbing Silver Surfer's head to charge the stone, and King Thanos yells, Do not leave me crippled, broken, and alive. We cannot die. Do you know what this means? Thanos stands back up and tells him, Yes. It means that I have all the time that I need. I will not kill you, but until you are ash and bone, I will work without end to deny you. I will never become this. You will be erased one way or another. Thanos opens up a portal and he walks through, leaving the king alone. And a moment passes, and then there is laughter. The king is laughing, and as he does, death walks towards him. He yells, Don't you see? We're still here. The boy did nothing. We are meant to to be. And as King Thanos holds out the Black Rose, Death takes it and remains quiet. He asks, Why do you look so? Oh, you're not here for a wedding. You didn't dress up for one. He's done it. I've been erased. As everything begins to fade to black, King Thanos asks, What did he do to be rid of me? What did Thanos do? And as King Thanos fades into nothingness, Death tells him, He won. Death smells the rose and drops it as she walks away and leaves. As the Ghost Rider, Frank Castle, sits out on a field looking out at the great cosmos, he can finally be at peace after living for so long. The problem is, he isn't feeling too peaceful, and that's because he can still feel him. Getting smashed to bits by the Silver Surfer, wielding Mjolnir, wasn't enough. Thanos still even torments him, even in the great beyond. As Frank takes a drink, he asks the question, A joke? Really? What's the difference between a fairy tale and Thanos? A fairy tale begins with once upon a time, but Thanos? His stories begin with, man, you ain't gonna believe this crap. Take for instance, that he's a terrible father. Long ago, he would travel around the galaxy, slaughtering planets and bringing a single warrior back to hold in his murder classroom. All for his daughter, Gamora. Fight after fight, she would kill the warriors, but whenever she would ask if she's done, he would always tell her, no, another. One day, one warrior stepped forward for Gamora to play with, but the warrior was far faster and stronger than her. Gamora would eventually become the deadliest woman in the galaxy, but that's a title you don't earn without getting your hands a little dirty. As Gamora fought back, the warrior would continue to beat her down, even to the point of slicing through her stomach. She begged Thanos to stop this, but Thanos, being the great father that he was, didn't bring up a quitter, and he told the warrior to finish it. Without saying a word, the warrior cut off Gamora's head, and as her head hit the ground, it began to change. Gamora's body hit the floor, and blood began to pour out of her body. And the body changed back to his original form, a scroll. The warrior takes off her mask, revealing it to be Gamora herself. And that was the day that Gamora learned to face death, to embrace it, to look it in the eye and meet her gaze unblinking and unafraid. Gamora looks back and asks if she's done, and Thanos tells her, No, another. Now everyone thinks of Thanos as the destroyer of worlds, the Mad Titan! And even for Thanos, no cruelty is too small for him. Take little David here, who just turned the age of one. After his parents put him to bed, Thanos appeared and took his blanket. Real jerk, right? And on David's fifth birthday, little David asked if he could stop having birthdays. Because if he doesn't have a birthday, then the monster won't come, but his mother finished setting up the party decorations, telling him, of course, there's no monster. We're just gonna have cake and fun and... But before she could finish her sentence, there's a loud crunch, and David's father's his car was crushed and thrown over the house. David's father in it. On his 16th birthday, David's girlfriend sent him a text stating happy birthday. But before he could even respond, Thanos took his phone and started typing away and then tossed the phone back to David. Thanos tells him that there's no way that he's walking away from that one. And David's phone begins to ding with a new message with David reading it. What the crap? You piece of crap, we're over. I hope you die. David asks, why did you do that? And Thanos tells him, happy birthday. This continued on throughout the years as David grew up and Thanos never missed his birthdays. At 21, Thanos killed all of his friends at a party. At 25, he burned down his school. And at 27, he got him fired. That all changed on David's 30th birthday. He set up waiting for Thanos to appear. But instead, he saw a news report that the Avengers had finally exiled him from Earth. So when David's 31st birthday came, he was happy. He was gonna have a nice barbecue end. But as soon as David opened up the 
door to his backyard. He saw Thanos at the grill. And with a snap of his finger, he destroyed the surrounding block and told him, Happy birthday. And once again, the cycle continued. Every year, another visit from Thanos. And on David's 45th birthday, David stopped him and simply asked the question, Why? He's tormented him every year, and all he wants to know is why. Should he kill himself? Is that what he wants? To see how far he can be pushed? Well, that's not going to happen. He's going to hang on and keep living. Despite everything that he's done to him and the people that he loves, Thanos feels around the ceiling of the apartment and tells him, hmm. And he punches through, hitting a pipe. David's apartment begins to flood, and Thanos walks out the door, telling him, No, I just don't care. See you next year. Real jerk, right? But for a guy like Thanos, he can be pretty romantic. Everything he did for the Infinity Gauntlet? That's the equivalent of showing up at Death's house with a boombox playing her favorite song. And he's certainly got an eye for art. The story brings us over to Thanos' shrine made for death, asking, What more can he do for her? Half of life is dead and still nothing from her. Her love is like hell. That's when Mephesto shows up and Mephesto tells him that death is a woman. He must woo her. Then the son of their love will dawn upon the frigid lands. He has shown her power, but she needs poetry and art. Thanos looks out at the stars and tells him, Perhaps you are right. I will show fair death art as only Thanos can. As Thanos went on to the remaining planets in the galaxy, he destroyed them. All of them lush with wonderful cultures, each symbolizing a different aspect of love and life. And as each of the planets explodes in brilliant colors, Thanos asks, Is this what she wanted, art? It fuels my greater work. It shows what art truly is. Death watches as the different colors shine, and Thanos tells her, It is not but a momentary meaningless distraction. See, Thanos has the soul of an artist, and sadly, the artist is the Marquis de Sade. Oh, but my next story is really messed up. After destroying yet another planet, Thanos searched the galaxy for his next conquest. And that world happened to be a bright, happy world. He flew down to the cheery world and he found these cute little creatures called Adorials. Thanos stepped on his throne and he shouted, I am Thanos, a god amongst you. And one of the Adorials jumped onto his head, bouncing up and down, telling him, Oh boy, a new god, yay, how exciting. As the Adorials crawled all over him, he asked, What is this? You shall pray to whatever it is that you worship so that I take pity on. But another Adorial is shouts, oh, we're worthy of heart. And Thanos asks, heart, as in the heart of the universe, here. And the Adorials tells him, the heart of our universe. Thanos demands that they bring him this heart. And as more of the Adorialis climb up on him, he shakes them off, yelling, how dare you touch me? I will strike you all dead. Another Adorialis asks, oh, Mr. New God wants us dead. We can help. Helping is fun. Who's first? One of the Adorialis steps up, shouting, me, me. I have so much to live for, but it will make my death so much more impactful. And the Adorialis child says, good for you, daddy. And so they slaughtered themselves in the name of Thanos. Thanos watches and says, you know, this isn't really that much fun if I'm not the one doing it. Finally, one of the Adorialis returns to the heart of the universe, and after looking at all of the dead ones, he states that it looks like he missed all of the fun. Neat. Thanos looks at the heart and asks, is this what you worship? And they tell him yes, and it gets better. And then they squeeze the heart. It makes a squeak toy sound without saying a word. Thanos punches him. After taking the squeaking heart and flying away on his throne, covered in guts. Thanos says, We will never speak of this again. So after hearing that, you'd think that Thanos is crazy, right? Well, this next story is just as good as the last one. This one starts by Thanos doing the most horrifying and despicable thing by helping an old woman crossing the street. As he helps the woman cross, he stops a bus that almost hit them. And just as the bus driver yells, he realizes who he's yelling at. He quickly says that he can just ignore them. He doesn't want any trouble for mad titans or anything. Please spare him. And Thanos continues to help the woman cross as the young girl on the bus watches. The the girl is Stephanie Critcher. Fun fact, she's destined to change the world. She's going to cure disease and end world hunger. She stops inequality and leads the earth into a paradise. And that all begins that moment that she steps off that bus and bumps into Suzanne. However, that never happens because Thanos delayed the bus. And so Stephanie never bumps into anyone. So Stephanie goes about her life growing old, never becoming the thing that she was meant to be. And as she lays at her deathbed, Thanos returned. He returns to show her everything that she was supposed to be and how she was supposed to help everyone because of that one day she never walked that path. As Stephanie looks all over the world that could have been, she quietly passed away. Thanos fell a little more in love with death that day, not because people could die, but ideas could die. Futures could die. But the death of hope is by far the sweetest. And now I'll tell you my final story, the story 
of the Kelorazians. They are a small sentient species living at the edge of the galaxy, far away from everyone. They're not a high-tech race, but more of a simple live-off-the-land kind of race. They have a closer relationship with their creator, though, the Great Haldun. One day during service, a priest tells the people that they must give thanks to Haldun for giving them eternal life. Through Haldun, they live forever, so long as they help one another and not a single one of them. On the day of their death, their souls will rise again, cleansed of memory, given new bodies. And those who sin, they will sleep for eons. They will sleep until they are healed, and then and only then will Haldun return them back to life. Through Haldun's love, they will fear no death. There is no death. There is no end. And then the priest is stopped by a voice stating, Was. There was no end. The Kalrassians know that voice. Everyone pretty much does. Is the voice of the mad titan Thanos. He has come to visit this small world. Thanos tells the priest that that is right. Haldun did love you, but his love was just a hobby. Immortals like him need to fill time, but he didn't want to lose any of you. So he made sure that your essential selves were retrieved and stored if the body should ever fail. Any he felt that became corrupted, he kept for study and eventually repaired them. But as afterlives go, it wasn't a bad system while it lasted. The priest looks at Thanos and asks, what did you do? And Thanos smiles. He then says, how done was recording you on a quantum server? It was very advanced. It would have ran until the end of time if I hadn't destroyed it. Then I tore off Haldun's head and burned his heart. The priest stares in silence and Thanos laughs. Now, when your bodies fall, there will be nothing. The priest asks, nothing? Why would you do something like this? Why, Thanos? He takes a moment to think about that question and then he says, I was curious. Eternal life awaits the just. But what if there is no eternal life? Also, Haldun's corpse is in the lands to the east. You can go look if you want. Incontrovertible proof that your god is dead and that your heaven has been destroyed. Will you all still be good now that there is nothing to be good for? The priest says no. We're still here in the now, and since we are all here, we can still try. And just as he says that, some of the followers begin to panic. They begin to yell that they don't want to die. How could he remain calm? And as the discord strikes the Calrassians, Thanos leaves, stating, <laughs> We can try. It's an interesting theory. I enjoy seeing how long this will go on for. Oh boy, yikes, right? Man, gotta say, feeling a whole lot better getting that rotten crap out there. Oh wait, how rude, I never asked for your name. Odin stares at Frank and after a long pause, he says, my name is Odin. And Frank yells, no way! So wait, is that gate over there? And as he asks that, the flaming skull begins to fade and Odin tells him, yes, if you're quite done talking. You may follow me, Francis Castle. Welcome to Valhalla. And there you have it, today's full story. I hope you guys enjoyed. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell right here on this channel, as it will only ever be receiving full stories from the other channel. And if you want to see the videos as they come out, make sure you go check out the Comic Story and Main channel, where you get five days of videos a week. I'll see you next time.